Hello and welcome back to the top 85 games for the BBC Micro Video Countdown series. In at number 46 is a game that I imagine quite a few of you will have been waiting to see. It's Arcadians from Acorn Soft. This was released in 1982 um, for the BBC Micro and then later in 1984 for the Electron. And it was developed by none other than Mr. Nick Pelling. You can see Nick there. Um, this is the first of Nick's games, I think, that we'll have reviewed so far, but rest assured we'll be seeing plenty more of his outputs later in the series. Now, Arcadians uh, was inspired by the arcade classic Galaxian, which was originally developed and published by Namco in Japan in 1979, um, and then later distributed by Midway in North America. So it's, it's a famous arcade cabinet game, but in my opinion, Arcadians is the finest of the uh, games that it inspired on other platforms. I think it's a fantastic arcade game and really, really good fun. Um, but just, uh, just to sort of set the record straight, it is by no means the only game that was inspired by Galaxian. Galaxian gave birth to many, many games of a similar nature. In fact, uh, the attack on Alpha Centauri that we saw earlier in the series is, uh, is if you like, a variation on the uh, Galaxian theme. And actually, Richard Hansen, who we met in the last video with Centipede, uh, he also developed um, a version of Galaxian, uh, which is called Galaxy Birds, and uh, that was released under the Superior Software label. However, this video is all about Arcadians, so let's get started. Okay, there we are, Arcadians. So um, technically it's a two-player game. Well, not technically, it is a two-player game. Um, but uh, as I make these videos on my own, I will be just be playing as player one. Now, I'm going to uh, stop talking in a moment because... Um, everyone who knows Arcadians is familiar with the jingle, but it never ever gets old. I think it's one of the best jingles actually on the Beeb. Um, so when I uh, press the key to start, you will hear it play. Amazing. I love it. So here it is, Arcadians. Um, so the familiar sort of uh, line up to a game like Space Invaders, but obviously with the uh, rather uh, novel edition of the uh, the flying creatures coming towards you in a variety of different ways. Now, unlike uh, Attack on Alpha Centauri, which we saw, um, the uh, sort of variations of attacking aliens uh, actually change. So, uh, whereas with Alpha Centauri, it was basically the same wasp that would just keep flying down until you killed it. Um, as you see there, um, all sorts of uh, attack formations can happen within Arcadians which makes it a much more challenging game to play, um, and, and indeed a more exciting one as well, because you're never quite sure what's going to happen next. Um, now, it's a, it's, a, it's a classic arcade game, obviously, so the uh, the aim is really to just defeat the, uh, defeat the aliens in order to move on to the next level. And uh, each level, very similar in terms of what you see. Um, hopefully we'll get past the first one, just to uh, give an indication of that. There we go. Ooh, nice little bonus there. Um, Yes, and I mean, I mean, it's sort of first impressions of a game like this. It's just, you know, it's great. It's got a, it's got a real sort of frenetic feel. That background music counting down. Um, perhaps not quite the same threat of Space Invaders in the sense of the aliens actually gradually moving their way down the screen. Um, but I think with those attack formations, you have plenty of peril to, uh, to, to be, have to be dealing with. Um, Graphics-wise, really, really good. I mean, uh, you know, I think that the uh, a lot of these arcade games don't tend to pay much attention to the uh, the shooter at the bottom of the screen. I mean, if you take uh, Centipede, actually, which we looked at in the last game, fairly rudimentary um, graphics for the uh, I guess you call it the gunship or, uh, or whatever it might be. Um, but here, I mean, it's like a proper oh, well, there you go, <laughs> just uh, just destroyed mine. But it's a, it's a proper sort of beast of a ship at the bottom there. Um, similar to Centipede actually, you have to wait for your uh, missile to reach the top of the screen or collide with another baddie before you can uh, before you can fire again. Oh, well, three in that one, gosh. Now if you are successful in killing all three of the attack formation in one go, you get a bonus which we uh, saw a little bit of in the, oh, oh dear, in the last level. Oh my, game over already. Alright, well, made it into the rank seven. Ah, there we go, we get the jingle every time. You see, it makes it worth replaying just for that, um, just to be able to hear the jingle, which I've just talked over, even despite saying I wouldn't do that. Um, 
I also quite like the, uh, the, the the sort of scoring feature that you you know what your rank is um, while you're within the game. So you can actually see at the bottom there that I know right now with my with my pathetic score of you know, a few hundred, um, I am only at rank 30. And then as the sort of more points that you score, um, your rank here you go. Look, I'm now rank 29 upon death. Um, yeah, you, you get a good feel for, you know, how you're ranking. Now, obviously, when you're playing by yourself, obviously, you're just uh, competing with your own scores, ultimately. Um, but when you've got this sort of system of ranking, it at least gives you an idea of how much better or worse you've, you've done, in my case, worse there, uh, than your uh, than your previous attempts. Um, and it really gives you that, fe that sort of arcade feel as well. Um, you know, it's ultimately, arcade games are really all about the high score. Um, you know, they're not they don't tend to, to have much of a plot, uh, they don't tend to have you know, levels with drastically different um, dynamics going on, but they are very much geared around getting that high score and, and potentially beating whoever, whoever else might have uh, managed to achieve it uh, in the arcades before you. Uh, now, with the two-player dimension to this game, of course, you could be playing uh, competitively against somebody else if you were to have a friend or sibling to play this with you. Um, I have to say, most of my Arcadians gaming has been uh, solo, but uh, there's no shame in that. I imagine that's the case for a lot of people. I mean, that's really what, uh, what, what games like this were about, ultimately, was about bringing that arcade experience into the home and actually being able to... Um, hone your skills, if you like, as, as an arcade player without having to necessarily burn your way through uh, endless amounts of pocket money to do so. Um, or, or your salary, I suppose, for some of the uh, the older arcade players of the day. Okay, we've just got this one. There we are. But there's a lot of uh, attention to detail in Arcadians as well. I mean, you've got you've got uh, some some great graphics, obviously, to illustrate it, but also with the explosions as well. You know, it's not just a sort of shoot it and it disappears affair you know you've got a nice little uh, sort of fireball as they uh, as they are blown to smithereens blown to oblivion um which i you know i personally think is, is, is a great little touch um and uh, i do like the uh, the detail of their the movements as they, as they make their way left and right across the screen and, and i mean when they fly down as well you get a nice sort of little swerving effect of them sort of Aviation terminology is escaping me, but the uh, yeah, sort of swooping left and right feel is, is very uh, very well done. You know, I mean, a game like this, you could just as easily have had them just kind of come down the screen, you know, statically. Um, but Arcadian takes that, that little step further and gives you uh, you know a real animated uh, sense of uh, enjoyment, which I think is to, all to its credit. And in addition to the one, ooh, <laughs> careful. Uh, in addition to that wonderful jingle, of course, you oh no, and you had two left. Oh, I only made it to rank five. Although I think that was slightly better than last time. Um, so yes, in addition to that excellent jingle, um, you, you know the sound effects as well. I think are pretty good. I like the sort of slightly high-pitched, um, rumbly sound that you get when you uh, strike one of the uh, one of the Arcadians down. Oh, oh no to do too well here if I start losing lives this early in the game, am I? Anyway, let's uh, see if we can do a little bit better this time. There's a slight sense of menace, actually, about those uh, those dark blue ones at the bottom with their sort of red beady eyes. I've got to say, that's, uh, that's a slight, uh, slightly creepy, I think. Um, but, uh, yes, I mean, I, you know, I've obviously left Arcadians until now before bringing it into the, to the rankings, I mean partly because it's, it's a favourite of mine um, but also because it's just got, it's got a great um, it's got a great appeal I think to Beeb gamers and, you know, most people uh, who've, who had either had a Beeb or had access to one will have played Arcadians I think uh, and it's, yeah, it's a kind of one of those sort of definitive arcade games and obviously everything that uh, Nick Pelling touched in the uh, sort of Beeb gaming world has you know, brought forth amazing gameplay. Um, I'm not going to reveal where I've ranked his other games, but rest assured they will be appearing quite a bit higher up actually than, uh, than Arcadians, which I, if anything I would say is possibly one of his most popular, but not necessarily his best game. Um, he definitely had some, some excellent output, uh, but uh, I mean it's quite an accolade really to think that Arcadians would be, if you like, the, the lowest of the ones that he produced because it's a cracking game. 
um, very much deserving of its position in the rankings um, at 46. Um, don't know whether this one's going to be a controversial rating. I know that there are there's a lot of love for Arcadians out there, um, so you know potentially some may disagree. Might think that perhaps I've uh, brought it in too low still. Um, I doubt there's anyone that will think I've I should have brought it in before now. Although I, I'm I'm uh, I'm hoping that uh, you'll have been looking forward to seeing it uh, make its debut in in the video series. Um, now, as with all sort of arcade shooters of its of its kind, uh, you know, there isn't a huge amount of variety to it in terms of um, sort of differentiation of gameplay. It is the same, ultimately the same um, style that you're playing against uh, in each level. Uh, it's the same sort of dynamic, um, but the difficulty does ratchet up. So uh, you know you'll find that the, uh, I mean here we're fairly tame with you know one maybe two of the. Uh, space baddies coming down to attack us but as the, as, as with uh, other games of its kind um, the further you progress uh, the more the more you will find yourself under attack by greater numbers there we go I'm interested if there's any sort of time limit on the level or whether you could really just keep going against one uh, one Arcadian indefinitely the sound certainly makes it appear as if you're running out of time it's, you know it gets more and more fast paced as you go along. Um, but uh, yeah, it's. Oop! There we go. Just avoid death there. Okay. Definitely get more points if you can strike them while they're mid flight. Obviously, getting rid of them while they're stationary is good from a survival point of view, but if you're playing for points, you really do need to. Oh! Not do that. Uh, you really do need to strike them down in mid flight. To your credit, uh, from a scoring perspective, if you can do that, especially those higher-ranking enemies that come from the top row, get one of those mid-flight, and you uh, get some serious points. But oh no! I think one of the sort of curiosities I've actually had about Arcadians for as long as I've played it really is that the 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 enemy that gives you the most points, and is if you like the sort of the boss of the um, of the game in the sense of appearing at the top. Um, it actually has, I guess, the least interesting animation because it, it's fairly static. It's uh, not got the, uh, the wavy bits that come up and down as some of the others do. Um, it does, it does sort of come to life a little bit when it takes flight, but uh, yeah, fairly a sort of static affair as it uh, moves left and right across the screen. There we go. Ooh, look at that! We're at rank two now. Not bad. Mind you, we've got no lives left, so could do with getting some decent scores to maybe uh, score myself a bonus life. I'm not quite sure what the threshold is for that on Arcadians, but uh, let's see whether or not we make it past. Oh gosh, four at a time. It's really, uh, really pushing it in the difficulty stakes. Ooh, look at those coming away. Whoa. So this is this is where it really does become quite a challenge uh, to just to stay alive <laughs> with this many of them in flight. So you really are in uh, in trouble if they uh, come your way. Also, there's not much of a gap either between them um, settling and the next the next set uh, taking flight as well. Oh my goodness me! Okay. Still no sign of an extra life. Not sure how much longer I, uh, I'm going to last here, but let's at least do as much of a clean up job as I can while the other ones are flying around. Really hammering the uh, the enter key on the <laughs> keyboard at the moment. Uh, although of course uh, Arcadians doesn't uh, doesn't doesn't reward the button basher because you do, especially at this point where you've you've, you've got to really time your firing correctly, otherwise you'll have to wait until get to the top again. Wow, there we have it. Okay, it's coming thick and fast now and I am still <laughs> on no lives. Oh, no. Well, there you go. That's not too bad though, is it? I mean, I got to uh, got to rank one there. All right, well, we'll give it one more go, I think. Um, even if it's just to hear the jingle again, which I am a bit of an addict for. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to better the, uh, the score I got there. Did make it all the way to the top, but uh, it's, yeah, it's kind of a testament to Arcadians, really. It's a, you don't really want to stop. You know, once you start, uh, once you start playing, it's got that sort of Pringles dynamic to it. You know, once you pop, you just can't stop. 
Um, it's yeah, it's just really really enjoyable. Um, you kind of lose yourself in it. So. And, it, and, and I won't use the word mindless because it's definitely not mindless entertainment. You, know, you do have to concentrate if you want to actually do anywhere near, um, well, certainly better than me, but I mean, even to do uh, as much as I have, has, uh, you know, it does require concentration. Uh, one of the sort of challenges I have with, uh, with doing these videos is that I feel that uh, my <laughs> the demonstration of my gameplay is perhaps not at its best because trying to balance the commentary alongside actually paying attention to what's going on in the game is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a bit tricky, um, if I do say myself. Um, but I believe in doing these things live, so to speak. Um, you know, I, I know uh, there is a temptation to think, well, I'll just you know, do a bit of gameplay uh, without talking and then just record some audio over the back. But I like to do it uh, as, I, uh, as I play. I think it makes it feel slightly more realistic, I think. Um, going on and I, you know, I think the reactions are a little bit more natural than if I know what's coming. Oh dear, look at that, I just walked straight into that one. Well, not that spaceships walk obviously, but uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. So uh, yes, this is probably about the time in the video where I encourage people to leave a comment. Um, if they've either played Arcadians before or Maybe if they think that they've played a, a better version of, of the original Galaxian. I, I doubt that. I, I think uh, fairly well established in Beeb circles that Arcadians is the final word in this, uh, this, this type of game. But uh, like I say, I'm obviously always open to hear other people's views. Um, do they think I've been too harsh with Arcadians or maybe too lenient? I suspect not, but um, yeah, do, uh, do get in touch. Um, Nick Pelling, by the way, if, uh, for those of you who don't know, is, uh, is, is active on Twitter, so uh, do, do give him a follow if, you, if you're not following him already, uh, assuming that you're a Twitter fan. Um, he's, uh, he's actually become uh, an investigative journalist these days, and he's written a book on the Voynich manuscript as well, uh, according to his website, so yeah, he's a man of many talents. Oh, unlike me, uh, when it comes to playing games. <laughs> Okay, there we are. Rank 7, not too bad. But once again, I find myself bereft of lives, so let's uh, see whether or not uh, I can last um, at least as far as the end of this level. Let's see how we're doing here. Oh, there we go. Nice formation. Maybe I should be a bit braver and go for some of these uh, flying formations rather than trying to avoid them, which is my general approach. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, I thought I'd avoided it, but not quite. All right, well, at. Uh, oops, spelled my name right. There you go. I've managed to take first and second place there, so not too shabby. And also bottom of the table, too, so here you go. All bases covered. Uh, well, I hope you've enjoyed that. I think we've given Arcadians a decent run through in this video. Um, it's a great, great game. You don't need me to tell you. Uh, but uh, yes, I, I've, I've enjoyed making this video as I always enjoy uh, playing Arcadians and uh, yeah, I hope, hope you've enjoyed it too and hope you will join me for the next video in the series. Until then, goodbye.